A former sponsor is making its return to the NASCAR Cup Series. Ty Gibbs will be making his NASCAR Xfinity Series debut, and it looks like the Pro Invitational will be making its return for the 2021 season. What's going, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to another video. We've got a quite a few stories to discuss here today on the channel. Let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. We're going to go ahead and start off with the sponsorship announcements. The first one we're going to take a look at is the Zane Smith sponsorship. He'll be sponsored by Michael Roberts Construction that will sponsor Zane Smith at this year's Daytona Truck Series opener. Looks well, kind of similar to last year's scheme that Zane Smith had for multiple races last year. I think the scheme looks really, really cool, and I think it'll be a good on the race track, especially since Zane Smith will probably be competing for the win at the end of the Truck Series race at Daytona since he is a pretty good Super Speedy racer. I do really like the scheme and not. Circle B Diecast is going to be sponsoring Brett Moffat as well at this year's upcoming Daytona season opener. Circle B Diecast has been sponsoring um, basically the Nice Motorsports organization for the last couple of years. They also sponsored Ty Majeski for a majority of the races last year before Ty Majeski was let go. And Trevor Bain took over a lot of the races last year. This game looks very, very different. There's not much change with this paint scheme, but... I do really like this paint scheme a lot. I've always been a big fan of the Circle B diecast, and I think that Plan B sales Circle B. It's really cool that they're continuing to sponsor NASCAR, and it's great to see that they're continuing to sponsor headed in 2021. The next sponsor we're going to take a look at is U Theory, as they're going to be sponsoring Corey LaJoy at this year's Daytona 500, and he'll be sponsoring him at Phoenix as well. We already know that Corey LaJoy is going to be sponsored for seven races this year, which to leader citizens, but we now know that he has two more races filled up for the year, the first race of the year, and the fifth race of the year. Again, I also like the sponsor a lot. I think it looks really, really cool. And I can't wait to see sponsor on the racetrack in this year's Daytona 500, especially since Corey LeJoy is locked in to this year's Daytona 500. The final sponsor we're going to take a look at is actually the big, big sponsor of this episode as Verizon is going to be ranking its NASCAR Cup Series a turn to sponsor as a primary sponsor, and they will sponsor Austin Cindric in this year's Daytona 500. The last time Verizon sponsored the NASCAR Cup Series as a primary sponsor was for Team Penske. They had been associated with Team Penske for a very long time, but the last time they sponsored on a NASCAR Cup Series car was all the way back in 2010 in Brad Keselowski's rookie season, and they also sponsored in the NASCAR Xfinity Series for Justin Allgaier in 2010 in his final year with Team Penske in his second year with that team full-time. Now, something very interesting to report is that they are expected to be a primary sponsor for a few more races this season on top of the Daytona 500. And we also do know that Austin will also have Verizon as a sponsor for this year's season opener for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. So he'll have double duty this weekend. If he doesn't make the Daytona 500 course, he will have double duty with that sponsor as well. I'm wondering if it's just going to be Austin Cindric who's going to be sponsored for the 2020 season by Verizon, or if they are going to be sponsoring other drivers of Team Penske, maybe like Brad Keselowski, because Brad Keselowski does have a few races, I think, that are not checked off, though there's a possibility that Keystone Light is going to be sponsoring. We have no 100% confirmation on that, but man, it's really cool that Verizon is going to be coming back to sponsor a team. I mean, yes, they've been associated with Team Penske for the last couple of years, really for a long time, as a matter of fact. But it's really cool that they're coming back to the NASCAR. I mean, we're seeing a lot of sponsors that have been out of the sport for quite some. Of course, we have sponsors inside the sport that have left. But it's really cool that we've been seeing a lot of sponsors that have been in the sport for a very, very long time making their return to NASCAR. And I think, and also, let's talk about the car for a second, too. This car looks really, really cool. I really, really uh, like the scheme a lot. It's very simplistic, but it's also, you get a lot of variety. And I think they do a really good job showing out sponsorship. But I really like this paint scheme a lot. And it's really cool that Verizon will be on the car as Austin Rick will be attempting to qualify for this year's Daytona 500 and have Verizon as his major sponsor. And I also like the fight fought on the car as well. On to the next story. It is possible that Gray Galding might be headed full-time to Jimmy Means Racing in 2021, driving the number 52 car full-time for them in 2021. Let me be honest here, this is a little bit of a downgrade for Gray Galding. Gray Galding a couple years ago in 2019 drove for SS Greenlight Racing, and all his cars are, cars are not very fast. He was actually almost able to make the playoffs with that team in 2019. Granted, though, the Xfinity Series competition actually was not as com as close as one another as it was in 2020 because you really had guys like Ty Rudder, Christopher Bell, and Cole Custer dominating. But Gray Golding, man, really proved how talented a driver he is. But he is a driver that has been able to get the best out of his equipment. I've been a big fan of Gray Golding over the last couple of years. I think Gray Golding's always had talent as a race car driver. I just think, but 
I just think over the last couple of years, Greg Galling has really improved as a race car driver because I think he's had cup experience and he's been able to get experience behind the wheel as well. You can't really have high expectations for Greg Galling if this is to come true. You can't really have high expectations for Greg Galling, really be a contender for the championship or really even contend for wins at all, except maybe on the super speedways if there's a lot of wrecks. Or, of course, if there's like not as many like races where there's a lot of wrecks as last year's Finney Series, there was so much aggression that drivers that were like running 25th can end finishing in the top 10. Look at Pocono, for example, where some teams that were running below the top 20 were basically not finishing, were basically having a shot to finish in the top 10. Greg Galling, I think, is a very top driver i think he though will actually impress people in this car and i do think there's really good possibility that greg Galling could contend for top 20 in the standings which would be a big big upgrade considering when cody vanderall drove the car that car really wasn't contending much i think they were barely inside the top 30 in the points but greg Galling, i think could get that car and get that car really up to the front or at least a little bit better than it is but it is cool that greg Galling is going to probably end up going full-time in 2021 and good luck to Greg Galding heading into the 2021 season if this is to be confirmed. On to the next story. Dustin Albina just recently had a conversation with Rick Ware. And apparently they are planning on running a mixture of Chevys and Fords in their NASCAR Xfinity Series program with their number 17 car. Now the plan is, is that they haven't announced the full lineup of their drivers for the 2021 season. But Cody Ware is going to run the Daytona Road Course and J.J. Yaley is going to run the Homestead Weekend. Now, they are planning on running that car full-time in 2021, but at this current moment, the driver has not been announced. I'm going to assume that someone from their cup field, like a Joey Gates, would probably be a driver in the line to drive the Rick Ware Racing car for 2021 at the season over at Daytona, but they're probably going to have to qualify in because I don't think they have enough owner's points to lock themselves into the race. Remember, Rick Ware Racing around Halloween, around Championship Week, as a matter of fact, announced that they were probably going to have one or two full-time cars, but I'm really waiting on what their plans are for the Xfinity Series. Like I said, they were planning on having two cars this year, and it looks like they're starting to figure out their driver lineup. It seems like it's going to be a, a race-by-race -race basis on who's going to end up driving that cars and who's going to end up driving their cars for 2021. It's something we're going to have to continue to watch. But it is really cool that Rick Ware Racing is continuing to expand. I can't wait to see what this team is going to do in 2021 for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. And now we're getting on the first of two major stories, and there's two parts to this story. Ty Gibbs is going to be driving the 54 car for Joe Gibbs Racing in select races in 2021 for Joe Gibbs Racing. His first race will be at the Daytona Road Course, and here's something very interesting to note. Ty Gibbs will be competing full-time in the ARCA Series, competing for the championship in 2021. Let's start off with the ARCA Championship. I think Ty Gibbs is arguably the guy to beat. I really think that Ty Gibbs will be the guy who wins the championship, hands down. I think he's going to have a similar season to what Austin Terrio had when he drove for Ken Schrader to race in 2017. He pretty much dominated. I think he's going to have a similar season to that. Last year in the ARCA series, he competed in 16 starts, ended up finishing fifth in the points because he couldn't run all the races because of his age. Now he's officially 18 years old, but he only ran 16 races last year, and he ended up scoring six wins with that team, and like I said, ended up finishing top five in the standings, and he did end up competing on all the races. Had he ran all the races in 2020, I really think that Ty Gibbs could have actually won the title and beat out Brett Holmes and Michael Self. And that's another thing for Ty Gibbs. There is less competition in the ARCA Series in 2021. You're not going to have Michael Self returning to get a, another championship. Man, Michael Self did not is basically looking to run Trans Am. He's actually going to be owning a Trans Am team. Brent Holmes is going to be running part-time in ARCA, but he's also going to be running trucks in 2021. And Haley Deegan is going to be moving up to trucks as well. And there's some other drivers, like possibly Drew Dollar, could also be running with Kyle Busch Motorsports as well in 2021. So you're going to have less competition in the field for 2020. So I do think that in ARCA, Ty Gibbs is arguably the favorite. I do think that he will hands down dominate and win the championship, unless, of course, other drivers from the NASCAR series, like Sam Mayer, do come down and try to compete for them. As for the Xfinity series, I'm not really surprised whatsoever that Ty Gibbs is getting serious. Remember, he is the grandson of Joe Gibbs. And people are going to look at Ty Gibbs and say, he doesn't deserve this opportunity because he is the grandson. But let's just remember, Ty Gibbs is a very, very talented driver. And he's been on my radar for the last couple years as a guy that I really think that can win championships in the Cup Series. I'm not kidding when I say this. I think that he is a driver that can win championships. But it's something we're going to have to continue to watch. I really am not going to put too high of expectations for him, though, in the Xfinity Series. Because, again, he's only 18 or 19 years old. He is a very talented driver, don't get me wrong. But you can't have overly a really high expectations for a driver like Ty Gibbs because he is young and he's getting the learning experience. But I do think that he'll get some top tens. If he wins a race this year in Xfinity and his select starts that he's going to run, 
GG to him. That would be really, really cool for Ty Gibbs and it really, really show a talent that he is. But I'm not expecting him to win in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. But I think it's a good opportunity for Ty Gibbs, and I cannot wait to see what Ty Gibbs is going to do in 2021 in the Xfinity Series, in the Argus Series. And I do believe that in 2021, Ty Gibbs is going to win the Argus Series Championship. Speaking of which, we're going to continue talking about the 54 car, as there were a few other drivers that actually were confirmed to drive the 54 car. Now, they haven't announced all their drivers at this moment, but there are a few drivers that were confirmed and will be driving this car. Kyle Busch, no surprise, is going to be coming back to race select like Xfinity Series races. He'll probably run five races in 2021. Denny Hamlin, I'm going to assume, is either going to run the first Darlington race or the second race. He's going to be re returning to make some select starts in the Xfinity Series. And here's another one that really should surprise a lot of you. Martin Truex Jr. is going to be making his NASCAR Xfinity Series return in 2021. Den uh, Martin Truex Jr., the last time he raced in the NASCAR Xfinity Series was all the way back in 2010. I believe the last start he had was at Charlotte and a finishing second to Brad Keselowski at the Charlotte Night Race when it was a breast cancer race that they had. Well, race in awareness for breast cancer back in 2010. And Truex drove for Michael Walsh of racing. That's how long it's been, and it was when Brad Keselowski was winning a championship in 2010 Xfinity, so it's been that long. It is really cool that Martin Truex Jr. is coming back and running select starts. Again, they haven't announced how many races these guys are going to run. I think Truex may run one or two starts, but it's really cool that Truex is making a few select starts uh, with Joe Gibbs Racing in 2021. Now, here's another thing that's really interesting is they haven't announced their full lineup. I think that there are more drivers that are going to drive this car. I think it's very possible that you're going to see uh, Bubba Walls come down and race in Xfinity this year. I also would not be shocked if Chris Bell does make a few select starts in 2021. And I would also not be shocked if someone from the Truck Series, like a Chandler Smith or John or Nemechek, maybe comes up and runs this 54 car in 2021 since Kyle Busch Motorsports is associated with Joe Gibbs Racing. That's something you have to watch, but I think it's really awesome that Mark Trick Jr. is going to be coming back to NASCAR Xfinity Series. And good luck to all the drivers who drive in 54 car. Chris Gale is also going to be the crew chief for this team in 2021. Good luck to all the drivers headed into 2021. And now we're getting on to the major, major story of this episode. As the NASCAR Pro iRacing Imitational Series is going to be returning in 2021. Remember that little pro imitation that happened around, you know, back when we were in the middle of the pandemic and NASCAR was shut down? That is coming back for 10 races in 2021. Five races will be shown on Fox Sports 1, and the other five will be shown on either NBCSN or USA Network. I do expect to be in USA Network because NBCSN is not shutting down until the end of the 2021 season. And here is the schedule for the NASCAR iRacing Pro Imitational. On March 24th, they'll be racing at the Bristol Dirt. April 21st at Talladega, May 5th at Darlington, May 19th at Surrey Americas, and June 2nd at a racetrack that is not announced at the time, though it could be a racetrack that we don't know about at this given time. There are some positives and negatives with this boot. People are getting their midweek races they can watch on Fox Sports 1 on Wednesday nights, and they're also going to be able to watch iRacing. You get a compromise. People wanted iRacing, but they also wanted midweek races. Some people did, but ratings were an issue, so NASCAR decided to compromise. And they're going to give midweek races as well on iRacing, which I think that's at least a positive about this. But there are overall some a couple of negatives that I truly have with the Pro Invitational. Here's one of the major problems you notice. Two of those races for Fox Sports 1 portion of the schedule are on races that are already going to have practice qualifying. I thought that they were going to be only doing these for races that are not going to have practice qualifying. Darlington and... Uh, Talladega are perfectly fine because they don't have practice in qualifying. So, fine, sure. But Bristol Dirt and Surrey Americas already are going to have practice in qualifying. So, I really don't 100% understand why they're having those tracks on the schedule. And they should have given it to two other tracks, in my opinion, if you're going to do this, two other race tracks that, you know, already are not going to have practice in qualifying. I don't understand why Surrey Americas and Darlington, uh, Surrey Americas and Bristol Dirt are going to have it. Also, I think Bristol Dirt is going to be really, really bad because did you guys see the Bristol asphalt race they had when we were in the middle of the pandemic? It was really, really awful. Also, another thing and another big problem is the ratings for this Pro Invitational are going to be awful. They, I think the Pro Invitational had about a 1 to 1 1.5 million average viewers for this. I would not be surprised if there's not even 500,000 people that do watch this event. And this because... This is taking place on a Wednesday evening, and it's in the middle of the week, 
And you're going to have a lot of people that are going to be working or have school nights, you know, and they're not going to want to stay up and watch it. And they're going to want to watch other things. Yes, of course, you're getting your fix of racing. People are going to watch it regardless. But I'll be honest with you. People would rather have regular practice qualifying every week. And I know I was one of those fans that really is not as big a fan of the Pro Invitational. And I'll be kind of honest with you here. I'm really not going to watch the Pro Invitational this time around compared to the last time. The difference between this time around is that there were no sports going around at this particular time when this event was going on. You didn't have football on. You didn't have basketball on at the time when the Pro Invitational happened last year. This time around, you're going to have all the sports happening at the same time. And I think that's what is overall going to kill the ratings. But, I mean, it's cool that they're bringing this back and it's fun. Another thing I really wish it would, and this would actually probably help the ratings, instead of having the tracks where the cup guys go, why not go to racetracks that are not completely on a schedule? Maybe they're going to go somewhere that we don't know yet. Why not switch it up and spice it up and actually make it intriguing? Because I'll be honest with you, if there was, it wasn't these racetracks that were already on the cup series schedule, I'd actually probably watch. Now, I don't know if it's because of contract rules or not, but to me... They should have tracks like North Wilkesboro, Circuit Jills Villeneuve, uh, Five Flags Speedway, other race tracks, maybe like Knoxville for the Cup Series. I know the Truck Series runs in Knoxville. Why not Knoxville for the Cup Series? I think that would make it more intriguing because, in all honesty, I think it should be all different tracks. Because people, honestly, they know that these races are coming up in the same week, especially for some races that are going to have practice qualifying. Just don't understand why a couple of these races, and again, NBC has not announced their portion at the moment. I just don't understand whatsoever why they're running at the Bristol and Circuit of the Americas when they're already going to have practice qualifying. That just is something I really do not understand, in my honest opinion. So, anyway, that is going to be for the today's NASCAR news video. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe to the channel, notifications so you can be notified when a video does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and support me on Patreon as well. Links in the description below for that. Sorry, guys, for not having a video earlier today. Or, you guys, sorry, I did not have a video yesterday. I was at a funeral yesterday, so I did not upload a video, and I was really not in the mood to upload a video. That's why there's a video going out today. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure you like it so YouTube can recommend more of these great videos out to you guys. If you do that, I would greatly appreciate it. Again, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support me on Patreon. Links in the description below for that. Anyway, guys, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's video, and I'll see you guys. Next time, take care, everybody.